We offer our viewers a free subscription to the Prayer and Worship Guide, which contains the prayers for the Mass, scripture readings, as well as special seasonal prayers. It'll be a great guide for your daily prayer time. For your free copy, call us toll free at 1-855-855-MASS. That's 1-855-855-6277. Or write to Heart of the Nation, P.O. Box 14428, Milwaukee, Wisconsin 53214. To order online, visit heartofthenation.org. Your privacy is important to us and we will not share your name or contact information with any other organization. If you're joining us through YouTube, please click below to subscribe to our channel. If you receive our monthly bulletin, you may use the enclosed reply envelope to send in your regular offering. The Heart of the Nation Sunday Mass is a viewer-supported ministry. Please do your part to help keep Mass on TV and online. Thank you, and may God bless you. As a chaplain here at Heart of the Nation and with our support of all of our members here at Heart of the Nation, we want to extend to you our sincere support through prayer and we ask the Lord to watch over all of our viewers, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Today we continue to celebrate our, our joyfulness over the Paschal Mystery with this, the fourth Sunday of Easter. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
and let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, lead us to share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and proclaimed, let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and they asked Peter and the other apostles, what are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise is made to you and to your children, and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you as an example that you should follow in his footsteps he committed no sin, 
and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross so that free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you had gone astray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere, is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate, is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice as the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus proclaims in the gospel today that he is the good shepherd. His sheep, you know, that's us. His sheep hear his voice and recognize it and know it. But beware, for there are also strangers and thieves about who do not have good intentions. They would steal or slaughter those very same sheep. I think it's interesting that Jesus specifically makes mention the power of someone's voice. A voice can be caring and soothing, but it can also be frightening and cause us to run away in fear. <laughs> When a stranger speaks to us, it can be alarming. But when a guide or a shepherd hears that voice, excuse me, when a guide or a shepherd speaks to us, we recognize their voice 
as someone that cares about us. We know that voice. The caring, compassionate voice of a parent or a friend, that can be the most powerful sound in the world. And Jesus knew that this is how it works. He was telling his listeners that whether or not they have met him previously in the flesh, they know his voice. They know it because he has always been there since before they were born. So when he, the good shepherd, the son of God, when he speaks, we should know that voice as something familiar, loving, and truthful. Personally, I very much believe in this. I believe that we instinctively recognize voices as belonging to either friends or strangers. You know, I'll tell you, there have been a couple of times in my priesthood, I, I have picked up the phone and the person on the other end sounded perfectly reasonable in what they were saying. But there was, there was something a little off in their voice, like there was trouble brewing behind the words. That was the vibe I would get. And to the best of my memory, those instincts have consistently proven true. Sooner or later, it, was, it came to light that the person I was speaking to was not of ideal intention. There is something of our identity that is present in our voice, and we can't hide it forever. Eventually, voices will witness to the fact that we are speaking either to shepherds or strangers. But take heart. Take heart because we have many minor or secondary shepherds in life. Priests, teachers, uh, civil leaders, parents, all that's great. But remember that above and beyond all the others, our ultimate good shepherd is Jesus Christ. And when we're lost and confused in the wilderness, we need only listen for that voice that we know. And it's speaking, it's calling out to us from that place where we truly belong. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. As Jesus Christ is our good shepherd, we call out to him with our prayers, that he may hear us and lead us to green pastures in the kingdom of heaven. For those who serve and lead in the church, that they may follow the example of Christ, the good shepherd. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For young people deciding how they will spend their lives, that they may consider serving God's people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of caring professions, that the Lord's compassion may be visible in them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, especially among our viewers and listeners, may they be led to restful waters where the Lord promises refreshment for their bodies and souls. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have gone before us, may they rejoice with the shepherd and guardian of their souls. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs and prayers of all of our Heart of the Nation parish members, 
including those joining us from the states of Virginia and Rhode Island. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, your church, your flock spans the entire earth. In our needs, these petitions are endless. May our prayers for one another reach up to you through our Lord Jesus Christ, for he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the grace and glory of your name, for our good and the laws of the church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim, but who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land and every people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, 
He took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Jerome our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer one another the sign of peace, and most especially those who are viewing and joining us at home.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. As we are continuing our celebration of the Paschal mystery in our hearts as we continue the season of Easter, the Lord be with you. And with your Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. And may he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. And let us go in peace.
We offer our viewers a free subscription to the Prayer and Worship Guide, which contains the prayers for the Mass, scripture readings, as well as special seasonal prayers. It'll be a great guide for your daily prayer time. For your free copy, call us toll free at 1-855-855-MASS. That's 1-855-855-6277. Or write to Heart of the Nation, P.O. Box 14428, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53214. To order online, visit heartofthenation.org. Your privacy is important to us, and we will not share your name or contact information with any other organization. If you're joining us through YouTube, please click below to subscribe to our channel. If you receive our monthly bulletin, you may use the enclosed reply envelope to send in your regular offering. The Heart of the Nation Sunday Mass is a viewer-supported ministry. Please do your part to help keep Mass on TV and online. Thank you, and may God bless you.